Welcome back. We are now going to look at functions and their graphs. So we'll spend the next few lessons looking at the graphs of functions. Uh, today we're going to start with some basic graphs and let's get started. For today, like I said, we're going to start with some basic graphs of functions and I'm going to give you a few pictures here of graphs that I'm going to uh, assume that you know some basic graphs that I'm going to not spend any time teaching, but like I said, assume that you already know what these basic graphs look like. So for starters, I'm going to assume that you know a linear equation. something in the form of y equals mx plus b. I'm going to assume that you know that a parabola, and we'll just work with a basic quadratic equation, absolute values, are the V-shaped graphs that we work with. A little more tricky here, but I'm going to assume that you have worked with a cubic, y equals x cubed. Rational function, um, y equals 1 over x, and this one's probably not as important that you've worked with yet. If you haven't worked with it yet, you will be in this course, but in general, we'll look at something like this. Uh, let's see here. Let's look at a radical function here. y equals the square root of x. And those will be our six basic functions that I'm going to assume that you uh, have some knowledge of. And those will be things that we work with today. But for now, let's back up a little bit. And I'm going to look at some graphs, some basic ideas of graph of a function. We'll write this out. Again, remember, we're practicing our note taking. So the graph. of a function in the xy plane consists of those points x and y such that x is in the domain of our function f. And you should also know that y is our f of x. Okay? Again, we have a pretty formal statement there, but we're going to, I'm going to go through and explain this as we go. So the graph of a function in the xy plane consists of those points x and y, such that x is in the domain of f, and y equals f of x. Now let me show you a graph that kind of explains what I'm talking about here. Let's go ahead and take A graph, it's my x-axis, my y-axis, and I'm going to take any old function. We'll just take something that looks like this. If I take a point on the x-axis, and we're saying that that is our domain, this point right here, 
label it A. I've come over A units on my x-axis. So my x value is A. If we go up and see where it crosses on my graph right there, we'll come across and check its y value. The y value then, we can find by taking and plugging A into our function. We'll call it f of A. So this point on my graph, this is my graph, this graph right here, the graph of f, this point right then, there is located then at A, f of A. According to my definition, this f of x, whatever x value I chose, in my case the a, is the same thing as my y value. You can see that in our graph. So let me get an example here that might make a little more sense to you. As an example, you might have a problem that asks you to find the y coordinate of point P on the graph. So let me give you a graph and show you where P is at, see if you can figure this out. Again, we have our XY axis, and there's one of our basic graphs that I told you need to be a little bit familiar with. This function, we're going to start out with f of x equals the square root of x. And I'm going to come over on my x-axis to 2 and ask you then to find the y value for point P, knowing that the x value is 2. Now, you're going to be able to look at your graph if you have a graph and kind of get an idea of where it's at. But algebraically speaking then, to find the exact value, what we will be doing if I want to find the value 2, I'm going to go back to my function notation. And I'm taking this value of 2, and I'm going to plug it into my rule. So f of 2 is the square root of 2. That means then that I know exactly where the coordinates are for point P. Point P is located at 2 square root of 2. And no matter how complicated my rule gets, no matter what this graph looks like, I can just use the algebra to find the exact values. Okay, now, in order to determine we looked at, uh, a few days ago, we looked at determining whether an equation was a function or not. When we first started this, we did a vertical line test. We checked to make sure that it had exactly one output for every input. Okay? We're going to look at this now a little differently because what we're going to do is look at a graph and uh, determine whether it's a function. Remember, that was a vertical line test. Let me just review that again for you. Very quickly, give us a few We looked at a problem that was similar to this. And we checked, we ran a vertical line across here, found out that hits in two places, it's not a function. So that was not going to work. If we had a graph, It was like this. I'm going to check my vertical line test. Only hit in one place. That works. Vertical line test will determine functions for us. So we can look at our graphs and determine real quickly whether they're functions or not. Other things that we are going to determine from our graphs, um, you can determine from your graph domain and range. 
thing that you should keep in mind here is when we're determining things from graphs, most of the time I would say that when we're looking at graphs and determining things from graphs, what we're doing is we're getting um, estimates. We're not really working with exact values. In order to get the exact values, we're going to go back to the algebra, back to this type of thing. We can get an estimate, check our answers, but in general, what we're doing is estimates. And we can get those pretty good estimates for domain and range in looking at our graphs. So let's go ahead very quickly and look at domain and range in terms of a graph. Okay. Again, by our definition, we said that our x values are going to represent our domain. And if you remember from our first lesson, sometimes the domain will be restricted. Our example here, y equals the square root of x. Um, on our first lesson, we looked at the restrictions for this and we said that we couldn't have negative values in here. You'll notice on our graph, the x values that we put in are restricted. We are not using any of the negative values for our x. And you can see that on this graph. So our graph, we're looking at the x values that are used. The x values that are used in this picture, as we go across the x-axis, we're not using anything over here. We're only using positives. And again, we show that that means that we're starting at 0, including 0, and going to infinity with our graph. So the graph verifies, or helps us see, what we already verified earlier that we're dealing with positive values. Now the range, if we look at our definition from earlier, our definition says that the um, y values, our y values here, f of whatever x values we're using, are going to represent our range, and in our picture, you see that the y values that are used on this y-axis, on the up and down, I'm just looking at the up and down section now, the y-axis, we have nothing in the negative. We're only dealing with the positive. So our range is also, let's label this here, this was our domain. Our range is also going from 0 to infinity. It's going to get there a little bit slowly, but on this equation, it will go to infinity. Okay, let me give you a graph. Uh, this graph is a graph of body temperatures. A uh, person's body temperature taken over the course of a few hours. So for this graph, you can see that the domain is restricted already. This graph does not have arrows to show that it goes on and on forever. This graph is only using values from 0 to 12. My domain is already restricted, and they're saying we're using a domain from 0 to 12. We're only looking at it for 12 hours. Now, in a little more detail, though, we have our range values. And in our range values, we need to look at what are the values that are used here. So I'm going to try to locate my lowest point on this graph. 